Humanity's hunger for energy has fueled progress and crisis. Fossil fuels and nuclear power have powered our world, but at a steep cost. As energy demand soars, our old solutions are failing. The answer may not be new, but a forgotten one, hidden within the Earth itself. Enter thorium, a silvery metal, abundant and overlooked. Named for the Norse god of thunder, thorium could power our planet for centuries with minimal waste and virtually no meltdown risk. Thorium is three to four times more common than uranium, and you might even have some in your home. Unlike uranium, thorium can't sustain a chain reaction on its own, a key to its safety. In a molten salt reactor, a small amount of fissile material sparks a reaction, turning thorium into uranium-233, a powerful fuel. The reactor breeds its own fuel, efficiently and safely. This is a second chance to get nuclear power right. Thorium could solve the energy trilemma secure, affordable and sustainable power. It challenges the idea that nuclear must be dangerous and wasteful. The question isn't can we, it's will we choose to, To understand thorium, look to the stars, born in supernovae, scattered across the cosmos, and woven into our planet. Discovered in 1828, thorium is a soft, silvery metal, only weakly radioactive. Its main isotope, thorium-232, has a half-life longer than the universe's age. Unlike uranium, thorium is stable and safe to handle. Thorium-232 is fertile, not fissile. It can't sustain a chain reaction alone. It's like a log that won't burn without help. But this limitation is its greatest safety feature. Reactors built around thorium are fundamentally safer, requiring specific conditions to operate. It's not a volatile force to be contained, but a controlled power to be enabled. This shift could redefine nuclear energy for the future. Thorium's greatest strength? Abundance. Found in most rocks and soils, thorium is as common as lead and far more plentiful than uranium. It's distributed worldwide, not limited to a few regions, offering energy independence to many nations. Unlike uranium, nearly all mined thorium can be used as fuel with minimal waste. A single ton of thorium can yield as much energy as 200 tons of uranium or 3.5 million tons of coal. The energy potential in known thorium reserves could power civilization for thousands of years. No more dependence on volatile fuel markets. Thorium offers a long-term, sustainable solution, not a temporary fix. The hidden giant beneath our feet could transform global energy security. The question is, are we ready to use it? Turning thorium into nuclear fuel is a process of controlled transformation. Thorium-232 needs a spark, neutrons from a fissile material, to begin its journey. In a molten salt reactor, thorium absorbs a neutron, becoming thorium-233. Thorium-233 quickly decays to protactinium-233, then to uranium-233, the true fuel. Uranium-233 fissions, releasing energy and more neutrons, sustaining the cycle. The reactor breeds its own fuel, needing only periodic thorium additions. This process is efficient, safe, and minimizes waste. Unlike conventional reactors, there's no need for complex refueling or enrichment. The thorium fuel cycle is a testament to harnessing physics for a cleaner future. The path from inert metal to powerful fuel could redefine how we power our world. To understand thorium reactors, we must set aside our image of classic nuclear plants with cooling towers and solid fuel rods. The Molten Salt Reactor, or MSR, is a true revolution. Fuel is dissolved in hot liquid salt, not packed in rods. This fuel-salt mixture flows through a graphite core where the chain reaction happens. 
Heat from the salt drives a turbine, generating electricity at low pressure with major safety advantages. First proven in the 1960s, MSRs are now being revived by a new generation of scientists. The defining feature of a molten salt reactor is its liquid fuel, which offers major advantages over traditional solid fuel reactors. Instead of static rods, the liquid fuel can be continuously cleaned and processed while the reactor runs. This means more efficient fuel use, far less waste, and a safer, more flexible power output. The result? A steady, reliable, and highly efficient energy generator for the future. The thorium molten salt reactor stands out for its inherent passive safety, built into the very fabric of its design. Unlike traditional reactors, its safety doesn't rely on complex systems or human intervention. A simple freeze plug melts if power is lost, letting gravity drain the molten fuel into safe, passively cooled tanks. This walkaway safe feature means the reactor can shut down and secure itself no operator needed. It's a fundamentally safer way to harness nuclear power. For over 70 years, uranium has powered reactors, cities, and even weapons. It's reign long, its power undeniable. But now, thorium steps into the spotlight, promising a new era of nuclear power defined by safety and efficiency. Uranium reactors require high pressure and complex safety systems to prevent meltdowns. Thorium, used in molten salt reactors, operates at low pressure, making meltdowns impossible and safety passive. One is a caged tiger, always demanding vigilance, the other a reliable workhorse, fundamentally more docile by nature. Beyond the immediate concerns of reactor safety, lies the long, dark shadow of nuclear waste, a problem that has plagued the nuclear industry since its inception and remains a major source of public opposition. The waste produced by conventional uranium-fueled reactors is a complex and hazardous cocktail of radioactive elements. The most problematic components are the transuranic elements, such as plutonium, americium, and neptunium. These heavy elements are created when uranium-238 absorbs neutrons without splitting. They have incredibly long half-lives, remaining dangerously radioactive for hundreds of thousands of years, creating a profound ethical and logistical burden that we pass on to countless future generations. The thorium fuel cycle offers a radically different outcome for the back end of the nuclear process. Because thorium-based molten salt reactors are far more efficient at burning their fuel, they produce a significantly smaller volume of waste to begin with, up to several hundred times less waste per unit of energy generated. More importantly, the composition of this waste is fundamentally different. The thorium cycle produces virtually no transuranic elements. The primary waste products are fission fragments, the lighter atoms left over after uranium, 233 splits. While these fission products are initially highly radioactive, their half-lives are much shorter, decaying to safe background levels in just a few centuries, not millennia. This distinction cannot be overstated. A 300-year timescale for waste management is a challenge that can be reasonably addressed with modern engineering and institutional stability. We have buildings and structures that have lasted longer, a 300,000-year timescale, however, is a geological epoch that transcends human history, language, and civilization itself. It forces us to design repositories that can communicate danger to a future we cannot possibly imagine. Thorium technology transforms this seemingly insurmountable intergenerational problem into a manageable industrial one. It offers a legacy of clean energy without the accompanying legacy of near-permanent toxic waste. Furthermore, the liquid nature of the fuel in a molten salt reactor allows for the separation and potential use of these waste products. 
Some of the fission products are rare and valuable medical or industrial isotopes, which could be extracted and sold, turning a waste stream into a revenue stream. Even more compelling is the potential for thorium reactors to act as waste burners. Because they operate with a surplus of fast-moving neutrons, they could theoretically be configured to consume the existing long-lived transuranic waste from the global stockpile of spent uranium fuel, transmuting it into shorter-lived, less harmful isotopes. This would not only provide a solution for future waste, but could also help clean up the toxic legacy of the past. Nuclear energy's greatest fear is proliferation, reactor materials being used for weapons. Uranium reactors produce plutonium, a bomb risk, requiring strict oversight. Thorium reactors, however, breed uranium-233, but it's contaminated with uranium-232, which emits intense gamma radiation. This makes weaponization extremely difficult and dangerous. The thorium cycle could finally separate the sword from the plowshare, unlocking clean energy without the shadow of nuclear weapons. If thorium and molten salt reactors are so promising, why aren't we using them today? The answer lies in history, not science. During the Cold War, nuclear research focused on military needs, specifically producing weapons-grade plutonium. Uranium-fueled reactors fit that purpose perfectly, while thorium did not. Despite its potential for safer, cleaner energy, thorium was sidelined. Sometimes the best technology loses to the priorities of its era, waiting for its moment to return. Once the uranium fuel cycle was chosen, it built a powerful, self-sustaining momentum. Over decades, a massive global industry grew, with trillions invested in uranium-based power and a deeply entrenched regulatory framework. Entire careers, companies, and national energy strategies depend on this path, making change risky and expensive. Thorium, by contrast, lacks a powerful champion and remains the domain of startups and researchers fighting for attention and funding. Breaking this deadlock will require either a major government push or a breakthrough that makes new designs too good to ignore. Thorium reactors face real technical hurdles, especially the harsh, corrosive environment inside molten salt reactors, and the need for advanced materials that can withstand decades of radiation and heat. Reliable, remote chemical processing is also essential, adding complexity but enabling efficient fuel use and waste reduction. Thorium needs a fissile starter, so initial reactors still rely on uranium or plutonium, but none of these challenges are insurmountable. Engineers worldwide are making real progress toward a cleaner, safer energy future. Thorium energy offers a wealth of advantages. Its use in low-pressure molten salt reactors means unparalleled safety, eliminating meltdown risks and relying on passive, physics-based safety features. Thorium is abundant, efficient, and produces far less waste, with a much shorter hazardous lifespan. Its fuel cycle resists proliferation, decoupling civilian energy from military use. And with modular factory-built designs, thorium power could become cleaner, safer and more affordable, transforming our energy future. Despite its promise, thorium faces major hurdles. There's no existing infrastructure or supply chain. Everything is built for uranium. Switching would require massive investment and decades of effort. Regulatory frameworks aren't ready for molten salt reactors, making licensing slow and uncertain. Technical challenges, like corrosion and new materials, remain unsolved. And without strong political or industry support, thorium's future is far from guaranteed. When we weigh thorium's promise against its challenges, the picture is complex. On one side, thorium offers safer, abundant, and cleaner energy, 
potentially transforming our future. On the other, real-world obstacles like infrastructure, economics and politics make progress slow and difficult. The journey from concept to reality is a marathon, not a sprint. The choice to invest in this future, bridging the gap between now and what's possible, is ours to make. Humanity faces a pivotal energy challenge. Fossil fuels and old nuclear power have brought us far, but their limits are clear. Thorium, long overlooked, offers a safer, abundant and clean energy future. The journey is difficult, but the reward, a sustainable world, is worth it. Will we invest in this potential before it's too late? The dawn of a second, safer nuclear age may depend on our answer.